Welcome to Antenna by Panda. This time, let me show you and share to you on how to find and where to find the core or cost line for the Yaesu FT2900R, which will be useful in building our repeater controllers. For this, we will be using the technical supplement or the Yaesu service manual for this radio, as it already gives us the documentation for the parts layout, block diagram, schematic diagram, and components uh, replacement, including the assembly and disassembly of the unit. We will be concerning ourselves with the circuit that controls the audio frequency, transmission, and reception. So this is the block diagram. We will uh, quickly check the notes at the bottom. The TX line are the solid uh, arrow lines. Uh, receive lines are the dotted arrow lines and the common lines or the signals that is coming or going to a component is marked with a thin arrow line. So as we are concerned with the audio signal, we will be focusing ourselves with the audio circuit and the circuit that controls it by looking at the block diagram quickly we can check that the audio amplifier is being controlled by this circuit which is a transistor Q1053, a diode D1030 and 1052 as the switch for the Q1035 this the signal is going to the bus but we can trace the bus line but it will not give us the specific line on where the signal is going but it will give us an idea on what component is receiving those signal so as we can see here on the upper part of the bus line, we have a ship register Q1048, which has a control line and audio frequency mute. So we will be focusing ourselves with looking into these components Q1048, Q1035, and Q1053. Now let's check the service notes uh, for the squelch uh, control and read the notes when no carrier is received the noise signal from Q1028 is amplified by Q1051 and is detected by diode D1011 and D1013 both DA221 so those diodes are marked with components number in the parentheses Those are refer uh, reference uh, numbers for the data sheet which you can find and download in Google if you search for the part number. Let's continue. The resulting DC voltage passes through the SQL knob to main CPU Q2001. The part number is F13, the last part. While no carrier is received, main CPU Q2001 controls Q1048 CD1494BPWR. So that is the ship register with con which controls the audio frequen uh, frequency mute line and the TX line. So we will now focus ourselves in looking at those components if we can find the signal that we are looking for. Usually the cost line is either positive or negative voltage uh, with a value of 5 volts. So let's proceed looking at the schematic diagram and uh, look into those components and check the signal output on the actual radio. So 
So this is the schematic diagram as we can see. Uh, initially, it's very huge and daunting to look at, but if you just practice and familiarize yourself with the components, uh, markings used on the circuit diagram, it will be easy for you to interpret the schematic diagram. So I already found the circuit corresponding to the audio circuit, which is this part, Q1035. So we have the external speaker, the audio amplifier. We also have the Q1053. which is the transistor that controls this uh, audio amplifier. So it's already gi uh, given that we can get the uh, signal from that point at the base of the transistor. The signal is 4.5 volts going to zero. So let's trace the signal path of this transistor where it is going so as we can see here uh, Q1048 or the pin number 12 of this uh, IC is going to the base of the transistor so let's just zoom in so we can trace it more easily so as we can see here we have initially five volts going to zero so it means when the radio is not receiving the signal from that uh, point is 12 uh, five volts from pin number 12 and it will go down to zero when receiving a signal so uh, let's trace that again So as we can see, it's already here. Then this is the point going to the Q1053 or the base of the NPN transistor, which controls the audio amplifier, Q1035. The signal there is already 4.5 volts at the base of the uh, transistor or the entry point for the resistor before going to the base of the transistor. So it's around 4.5 volts. Now let's check the collector voltage. As we can see, we have uh, zero to 4.5 uh, to four volts. So it means the same, we have an initial uh, voltage of uh, 4 volts or the supply voltage for this transistor this is an inverter transistor it receives the signal uh, from the base and turns on the transistor to trigger the another transistor and drive the signal to the amplifier. So let's trace the collector part of the schematic diagram and where it is going. As we can see here, it is now connected to the TX line or pin number 4 of the Q1048. So we have established our points of interest. Now let's check the voltage output from those pins as it is already established that those are the core or cost line or the signal that controls the audio frequency reception and transmission.
So it means this is negative uh, cos or active low from 5 volts going to 0 volts when it receives a signal. Let's turn on my camera, phone camera, and let's take an actual measurement on the ISO 2900 board. It's already opened on my desk and we will read out the voltage output based on the schematic diagram provided by the service manual so initially we have 4.85 volts negative the radio is actually outputting a negative voltage that explains the use of the NPN transistor The test probe is positioned at the cos line of the radio. Let me just focus it. So, it is placed at the end of the resistor, which is very close to the bias point on the board. It's the hole beside the PCB on the resistor on the edge of the resistor you may either use that as stopping point for the cos line or cos wire or the jumper wire that you will place on the board or you may place the jumper wire on the IC component on pin number 12 but just be careful because the pin leads are too close and you might easily damage uh, your radio or the component if you are not careful and you are not using the proper soldering iron to place the jumper wire so let's transmit on the frequency it's 146.945 the initial readout is 485 when I press the PTT, the voltage will go down and this LED will light on the radio. It will turn up red. As we can see, it's 0.26, but it's too close to the voltmeter, so it's affecting our readout. I will move it away and you will see that the voltage is very close to zero as we transmit on 146.945. So when I release, it goes up to 4.85 volts. When I press the PTT again, it's 0 volts. The radio is receiving and that is our cost line for the ISO 2900. I hope that it will help you in finding your cost line for your radio and use it in building your own repeater controller. If you find the content of this channel useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. And until next time, see you once again.